this is it. The Ford Focus RS. And though it wears a blue oval, it's a descendant of BMW. A spiritual successor to Subaru, and inspired by Mazda. Like the E30, the WRX, and the Miata before it, the Focus RS is a car that elevates the blue collar. Forget for a second that the RS makes stout power and is blisteringly fast, because it doesn't necessarily share those things in common with the others. The similarity between these cars is an experience geared toward what cars are supposed to be about. Driving. And it does so uncompromisingly, but just like the really good GTIs and Type Rs, the lack of compromise never manifests itself as an annoyance. Maybe because you're too distracted by how damn good the car is. <laughs> so, this completes the trifecta of uh, Ford Performance hatchbacks that we've gotten the opportunity to drive. This is the Ford Focus RS, and this is the highly anticipated big brother to the uh, Focus ST. Now this differentiates itself from the ST with uh, probably most crucially all-wheel drive. Um, this uh, RS is very much a technological just powerhouse. Uh, it's got torque vectoring, it's got all -wheel, an all-wheel drive system, uh, all sorts of complicated differentials, um, and it's got a 2.3 liter as opposed to the 2 liter that comes in the uh, ST, which makes a good chunk more horsepower, about 350 crank. All of that means that the hatch will do 0 to 60 in a thoroughly competent 4.6 seconds and the quarter mile in just over 13, which are great numbers, but nothing we haven't seen from other souped up Econo boxes before. But where the RS really leaves its mark from a performance standpoint is its composure. Maybe it's the stellar chassis or the torque vectoring or the sublime steering feel, but this car is unflappable. And that composure, combined with the Michelin Pilot Supersports that Alfred's example came equipped with, translates into almost an entire lateral G of grip. If you need a comparison, that's the same amount of grip that the $70,000 R35 GTR was putting down when it first debuted in 2008. Unfortunately, that's not where the similarities end. Though this has less to do with the performance of these cars on the tarmac and more to do with their performance on the market. Like the R35, this is the first RS that US buyers will have a chance to get their hands on after years of envious longing for models available only overseas. Like the GTR before it, which cost $70,000 at MSRP and yet would go on to sell at dealerships for anywhere from $90,000 to $130,000 in its first year. The price of the new Focus has, in some places, spiked. The markup is actually 20 grand on top of the 36675 uh, that is the MSRP. So you could be paying anywhere from 45 to 60 uh, for Focus RS. And I think some have even gone uh, out for sale for up, upper 70s. Overall, there isn't a lot of stomach for it. Um, the whole purpose of it being a Focus is for you to be able to get a performance package in a, an economy car. So the, the price shouldn't be on the level of like a cheap Porsche. So the Focus ST is a very fun, playful car. Well, this car means business. I mean, this is a much more track oriented car and it's got a really good steering feel. Uh, if you want to like drive around some curvy roads, uh, this car would be a great option. The Focus ST on the other hand would be a great like just get around car. Uh, if you want a car to just go around town and put around town and have fun. But this car is really, uh, Comparable to how the STI and the WRX is, um, this is definitely the more serious car. As far as all of the things that are very impressive about this car, the horsepower is the least impressive. Uh, the confidence that the car gives you going into a corner, that's where the money that you're spending is really going because power is easy to come by. I could make a Focus ST as fast as this in a straight line, but I don't think that I could ever imbue a Focus ST with the kind of confidence that this RS gives me in the middle of a corner. This is a car that would make you seriously consider buying a new car and, and swallowing that depreciation cost, but I really don't know if this car will depreciate, so I, I don't know if it'll ever really hit the used market like the way that it does for other cars. This car may actually just hold its value really well because of how good of a car it is. I mean, I don't, I don't see anyone wanting to give these up. If you own a Focus RS, you're not gonna sell it anytime soon because it's a great car. I actually had an ST before and I decided that I wanted to go with the RS. I'd actually wanted the RS originally, but we didn't have it at the time. 
Um, so thinking that maybe Ford was never going to offer the RS here, I went with an ST. And, and I really enjoyed the car, uh, but what I really always wanted was the RS. I wanted the, the king of focuses. I wanted the, the best, most powerful economy car that Ford was going to produce uh, with the highest performance, uh, the best suspension. And I think what Ford did with it was go beyond my expectations. And price-wise, at least at MSRP, there's just no better way for you to get more driving value for your money. That's really the key to it for me. I want to know that every day that I wake up and I have to drive to my job, I'm going to have an experience doing so. And that's really why I went with the Focus RS.